Good afternoon to faculty and uh, B.Sc. first year students. I am Dr. N.K. Prakasham with the background of industry. Would like to spend some time with you to speak on the topics related to you. My lecture will be something different from what you hear from the uh, hall in the lecture halls because I am not a pure lecturer, but still I, I come from a background of industry. I would like to give more details interlinking application. Now, we have a look at introduction to analytical chemistry, analytical methods. Before I start the lecture, I would like to remind to all the students of first year graduates, you are supposed to be strong with basics as far as your interviews is concerned. This will help you in the future for you to grow further. Now, to concentrate on the introduction to analytical chemistry and analytical methods, we start with, all of us should know, we should know after the lecture, what is the definition of a chemical analysis, what is the definition of, uh, what is the importance of uh, analytical uh, importance, what sort of uh, chemical analysis of water we can do it, and what is the analytical procedure in chemistry, what is qualitative analysis and what is quantitative analysis, what is SOP, what is working range and calibration of an instrument. Why I am trying to emphasize these points? Every student, when you get exposed to theory, when you get exposed to instrument, when you get exposed to standard operating procedure, you will be satisfied by looking at your marks and the percentage you score. But remember, for the present competition, you need to work more vigorously to understand the practical aspects of that. To start with, analytical chemistry, it is a branch of a chemistry. One should have analytical and critical thinking to understand the procedures as well as instruments to derive maximum benefit in the industrial revolution as well as research. As far as analytical chemistry is concerned, it deals with, they have so many tools and materials to answer the analysis of the materials. We ourselves should question what type of material it is and how much. These two inter, inter, in, gives a feeling to us what and how much gives quantitative and qualitative. What arrangements and structure are formed. When you do the compound analysis or a particular structure, you will be knowing what sort of compound you are dealing with. So, the role of analytical chemistry, how it happens. Analytical chemist works to improve the reliability of existing techniques to meet the demands for better chemical measurements which arise constantly. Why I am trying to tell is, majority of us knows when we are exposed to an instrument or analysis, the type of doing or the practice. But we continuously should think on the existing techniques, how best we can introduce in a different way for different type of products needs to be thought by every student of the BSc. What are the adapt proven methodologies to new kinds of materials or to answer new questions about their composition? Need to carry out research discover completely new principles of measurement. The purpose of showing these slides is we should know really what sort of instrument we are doing, what sort of parameter we are doing, how we are doing. The, this this to thought provoking, I, I just put slides in front of you. Now, when coming back to the methods, what sort of methods you are having in the, to analyte, a, 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 to detect and analyte in the chemistry for the chemical analysis methods, you have a classical methods as well as instrumentation methods. Classical methods mainly deals with, you always work in a common laboratory where you always operate with burettes and pipettes, titration methods and all that. Instrument methods needs a special skill or a special type of analytes which is having a more complex nature then you go for a instrument methods. So, we should know while doing the analysis at what stage we go for a classical method, at what stage we prefer instrument methods. There are number of procedures in the analysis, but which one to be aimed first, which one to be aimed in aggressive manner, one has to think. When you come back to wet analysis, you have a classical methods. In the classical methods, you can bifurcate into titrometric, gravimetric, reduxometry, complexometry. In the titrometry, acid-based titration, I am sure 
some of the titrations you might have done. Complexometric titrations you will be doing soon. Redox titrations also you will expose. Determination of hardness and alkanity, chlorides, DO, BOD, COD, all these comes into your redox. So, here gravimetric analysis also another method which you can do the analysis. I am only trying to focus what sort of possible analysis or what sort of possible methodology to be adapted in classical methods and instrument methods I am trying to give initially as an introduction. Now, suppose we are going to start either instrumental or classical method. What are the fundamentals one has to look really as a chemist or as an analytical chemist? Whether you are trying to do a solid sample or a liquid sample, the top priority should give it to sampling. Sampling means one should understand when you are trying to do a liquid sample or a solvent sample, trying to collect the sample and do some parameters in the QC analysis, you need to focus on the sampling. When you try to take the sludge or solid sample, you need to mix it in make it four portions. Cup and cone method you have to mix the sample and take the composite. Similarly, when you talk about the liquid, we call either homogeneous sample has been taken or it is heterogeneous. The meaning here as a chemist you need to understand homogeneous means out of the 20 tons or 30 tons a tanker suppose you have collected a sample an organic solvent or a, a particular liquid sample you need to take from different directions to ensure that you have taken a proper sample. Sometimes you need to give a field sample treatment for example, when you try to collect uh, effluent samples in the field 100 or 200 per day, you are supposed to fix a certain parameters like dissolved oxygen before bringing it to laboratory. What sort of laboratory treatment you have to give? One should understand while trying to do the analysis laboratory assay. Maybe assay means it looks a little bit new for you, but it is more or less like a purity. When you are trying to deal with the chemicals to prepare a standard solutions, you should always should have a look on the purity aspects type or grade like an analytical grade or lab grade or gravimetric grade and then you should also have a look at MSDS in view of the safety angle. Then coming back to calculations and results and presentation why have focused here majority of you people will feel inferiority in presenting the units while doing something. It, it is a common feature we observe with the students. You one should know the fundamentals when you are trying to report either titration method or an instrumental method. What sort of parameter we are reporting and what are the units. For this you need to be very strong in the calculation part also. Analytical chemistry is the science of making quantitative measurements. Quantifying analytes is a complex sample becomes an exercise in problem solving. Why I am trying to mention this is every sample you cannot take it granted this is a perfect sample we have done analysis on a particular instrument. Reason being you need to think continuously on the calibration part, on the instrument operation part and the complexity of the sample which you are trying to do it. Because this will be knowing slowly when you try to understand the methodologies of the analysis and the equipment to be operated when you do on your own, when you happen to interact with the your faculty as well as some of the seniors, you will be gaining more and more knowledge. So, for methods of detecting NLH when you take it, you can have a look at the physical parameters like mass color, refractive index and thermal conductivity. Spectroscopy, I am sure you will be exposing this, this year in the BSc. You will be looking at spectroscopy aspects, absorption, emission, scattering. In the spectroscopy also, you can also consider atomic approximate spectroscopy. I will try to explain one or two instruments in the 15 minutes how best we can do some of the analysis there. And you should also have a look at electronic charge, electrochemistry, mass spectrometry. What are the instrument methods? See, coming back to why I am trying to focus more on instrument methods is your thinking capacity will certainly elevate when you are strong with the base and when you are strong with the classical methods, then your output in the instrument methods will be much more better spectrophotometer method. You take any university or any establishment, you will have a small spectrophotometer. You get satisfied with a particular color measurement, absorbance, concentration and you yourself will satisfied that as if we have achieved something. When you really come into competition, 
you will be understanding what are the efficacies in doing the spectrophotometric analysis. Why people are opting for latest developed uh, analytical equipments means a parameter which can be done in spectrophotometry also will be done in atomic absorption, but people will prefer atomic absorption spectroscopy. For example, I would like to give you basic fundamental drinking water analysis you take it. Like a blood sample analysis, if you look into the standards of the drinking water, all the trace elements will be in 0 0.5, 0 0 0.05 ppm level. Spectrophotometer means certainly you can do it, a certain wavelength, you can measure the absorption and you can interlink it to concentration and you can calculate. But you never know the difficulty of the matrix which interferes in the spectrophotometry. How atomic absorption spectroscopy is superior than spectrophotometry? If you take in the drinking water, same drinking water, you, the, the people who are drinking the water does not have an idea on the quality unless and until we go for analysis or having a grip on the source and the treatment. Now, coming back to the atomic absorption spectroscopy, I would like to give an example here. Simple fundamental wa water, drinking water, you take it. Even that atomic absorption spectroscopy, also very briefly, I will tell you will have a light source of halocathode lamps, you will have a burner you will have a source of the uh, um, uh, light for the uh, heat energy source, air acetylene mixture will be there in which you, the temperature will be given. Here the theory is when you are trying to feed a sample, liquid sample, when the atoms excites from, from ground state it excites, it absorbs. It is again interlinked with the base Lambert's saw so that it is interlinked with the absorption and concentration. This is the principle. When you try to aspirate the liquid sample, there will be prerequisite conditions is required for the analysis. Say for example, 1 liter sample drinking water I have taken in mineral water, anticipating that will be the best quality in the India. You take one, bra one uh, brand of uh, uh, mineral water, try to maintain the pH around 2 or 2.2 and then 1 liter you take it, try to do an extraction with methyl isobutyl ketane in presence of a chelating agent like APDC, ammonium pyridylene dithiocarbamate, at a set of conditions, you will be successfully at that pH, you can trap either 8 to 9 elements into organic layer. Then you can strip back into aqueous. Once you strip back into aqueous and you are going to do here, concentration of the sample you are going to do here to analyze the lowest concentrations of the metals present in the drinking water. For that one liter sample after adjusting the pH, after doing an extraction with the MIBC in, in, in presence of with the help of APDC, you are going to strip that entire into 25 or 50, 25 to 30 maximum concentration of in, in H, HNO3 diluted solution you strip from MIBC layer. Now clearly understood? Now, we have stripped the metals present in the drinking water to organic phase. From organic phase, you have stripped back into water. Now, this 25 ml is ready to operate on the atomic absorption spectroscopy. Reason being, by doing this pretreatment, you are trying to bring the analytes concentration into the working range of the atomic absorption spectroscopy. Otherwise, if you are working either below the working range of a particular atom, if you are working above the working range of the uh, uh, particular instrument, you cannot get the reliable values. So, by doing so, whatever you are going to do here, the, the background correction can be efficiently can be given in the atomic absorption spectroscopy, which is reliable. If you happen to do it in spectrophotometer, you may have to concentrate the 1 liter and bring it to 25 because of permanent temporary and permanent hardness. If the, the lot of prestates will come and lot of acids to be added. This will give a lot of problems. Certainly, you will get a reading, but do not get satisfied with the spectrophotometric reading, which you feel that I got some reading, it is correct, because you need to cross check your own analysis by understanding the important parameters and calibration parts of a particular instrument, apart from understanding the procedural aspects. Now, coming back to potentiometry, polarography flame photometry, XRD, gas chromatography. The purpose of mentioning these techniques to you, you need to go a long way, but do not get disappointed. Everyone will get an opportunity to work on the instruments to understand. Spectrophotometry to atomic absorption, then comes back to potentiometry. Every 
every particular solution when T D S is there, metals are dissolved in that. Every metal will have certain potential. At that particular potential also, you can do it on a polarography techniques. Potentiometric titrations can be done. Sodium and potassium type of elements can be analyzed on the flame photometry. When you are trying to do a vast sample analysis, 20 to 30 or 40 elements in a particular sludge sample or a solid sample, you can always look into XRD, like X-ray diffraction technique. By making a pellet, you pass the X-rays, you will have a technique. Then coming back to gas chromatography. Gas chromatography is, as all of you might have generally known, it is widely used in the bulk drug. Wherever organic uh, solvents are dealt, they take into consideration and they, it, uh, it is only a question of a particular organic compound separation from a mixture of compounds will be done by the gas chromatography technique. <coughs> I, I always feel one should have a minimum requirements for a student. It is not to point out anybody, but it will give a tremendous confidence in life for you once you complete BSc because industry also looking for an understanding people. How much subject you are having is a different aspect, but your attitude and thinking is a main ratio for you to come into life successfully. I expect that understanding towards basic knowledge. Basic knowledge means when you cross an intermediate, you should have an idea on the molarity, normality, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, certain terms. Then only you can understand our reactions wise, calculation wise, what is endothermic, what is exothermic, solubility aspects. Like fundamentals, you need to be strong. Never get satisfied after getting a marks. Be strong on fundamentals. Clarity on the analytical methods. When you start seeing an analytical method, you always search for an alternative methods for the same type of elements, what sort of elements are available. Now, material, uh, uh, tremendous uh, literature is available in the Google, but too much having theoretical knowledge without practical knowledge also does not help you people. So, I, I always request all of you to take opportunities to work on the various analytical methods wherever you get opportunity. Clarity and SOP. Every industry or every organization will have a standard operating procedure for a particular instrument, particular element. You need to concentrate on that. One has to satisfy in the calibration on methods, knowledge in operation and maintenance of the instrument. In chemical analysis, plays a very crucial role. Now, we will try to understand the important aspects of single pan analytical balance. Here, all of you know it is a very, very simple equipment that we do not know. We, we think that we do not know so many aspects in this. Reason being, when you get acquainted with the sophistication in the technology, we normally forget the basics. Do not do that, my dear students. Look at the balance. You have a pan. You can weigh the substance. In right side of the pan, you can see a, a small circle in which you, you always uh, try to adjust. There will be a water bubble. Circle will be there. You adjust the level indicator in such a way that the water bulb will come into middle so that the balance is placed properly. Now, modern electron collaborative balance works on the principle of magnetic force restoration. In the system, the force exerted by the object being weighed, uh, lifted by an electromagnet. Earlier, we used to have a two, two balance type and all that. Now, analytical balance will be always, as not pe majority of the people will go for a single pan balance, which is very, very accurate measurements will be done subject to proper maintenance and calibration methods. Components of analytical balance, you will have a pan, power cable, external calibration, weights, level adjustment. After placing balance on the platform, adjust the leg screws as I explained to the center level. Calibration and maintenance of analytical balance, you always do with the help of a standards standard weights which is already calibrated, number one. Number two, the supplier of the instrument also will give a calibration certificate to you. You need to cross check that. When the time is over, you have to get it done properly so that the validity of the validity and accuracy of the particular instrument will get increases. Workroom should be clean when you operate a balance. When normally, we keep an instrument in air conditioned room. Your workroom should be very neat and you need to keep airflow should be restricted inside the pan and direct sunlight or explosive things should not come into picture because of the variations and we should never use the balance between 5 and 35. Do not leave material on the balance. Normally, what do you do when an analyst in any company including myself 30 years back, when a balance is there while going somebody will keep 
as pets or a cell phone or a key on that. These are all the bad practices. Instrument means instrument like a god. We need to respect the instrument conditions. Then only you can derive miracles out of the equipment or property which you are having at your college level or our national level. Do not use the balance anywhere exposed to explosive combustive or corrosive gases. It is natural because the purpose of writing corrosive is it is a metal structure inside and uh, you, there is a possibility for corrosion and it gets corroded. So, there are possibilities of error because of this certain uh, suggestions have been given here and there is an operation temperature also recommended 5 to 35. Now, before I conclude this lecture as an introduction, I would like to show an analytical balance of video clipping to you so that you will try to understand the operation part of balance. Here, what, what do I am trying to explain for you in the video? The practices of weighing because my purpose is everybody will have a feel that uh, I know how to weigh but we really do not know what we are really missing because somebody will weigh the uh, substance by taking a small paper, normal paper, filter paper available with you. Somebody will uh, take a, a bigger a beaker. Why I am trying to give some certain examples to you which may hurt you the reason being one has to always take a sensible when you are trying to measure 0.1 or 0 0.5 grams one needs to have uh, adopt the standard procedures which will give a strong foundation just have a look this particular video you can always see it trying try it's already written there you can always have have a look you are trying to just start the balance and now see she is trying to put a, a type of uh, 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 a fiber type which is a very very lightweight then here the important thing is both the doors will be closed. Well, then the, the, the reason being is now after putting that you need to make sure you have to tear it to zero. After making it to zero you should be very careful and open the door again and try to take the substance not with a hand with a filter paper with a spatula please note that. Majority of the people who have instrument and chemical but does not have spatulas in most of the labs because the purpose of adding spatula is you can maintain the neatness you will ensure that a proper addition of a chemical will be done and while we are trying to measure either 0 0.5 or 1 or 2 you need to when you go to 1.9 suddenly you will put another 0.5 extra you an analyst should get a control here while adding substance properly and afterwards you have might have seen absolutely it is neatly clean. So, my dear students I only just uh, tried to brief in the given time of 15 minutes the topic number 1. My intention is you need to be strong on fundamentals nothing is impossible doing an instrument and doing analysis not a big thing, but understanding things properly and applying is more important. Let us consider in the next lecture soon some of some more topics. Thank you.
Uh, good afternoon, I am back again. So, now we would like to continue the first lecture by introducing uh, certain more methods and uh, towards some of the apparatus which is normally present in the laboratory. You need to understand each apparatus uses while doing an application. You cannot use just because it is available. First apparatus which I am showing which is a standard safety equipment. People may not give importance. My dear students, you need to give importance for MSDS of each chemical to understand its compatibility and existence in the laboratory while you are dealing with. After that only try to learn the subject because when you try to know MSDS, you can do wonderful work with the chemicals. Now, normal equipment which any lab will have because watch glass, test tubes and tongs. Maybe majority of the people knows the tongs means we try to hold the test tube while doing certain. Since you have done some of the salt analysis in intermediate, you are very familiar, I believe. Graduated cylinders, crucibles, crucibles also you will have a different type of crucibles uh, for, with reference to analysis, uh, either gravimetric or silica, which type of analysis you are doing, depending upon the temperature and the interaction, we will change the crucibles. You will have a lot of funnels in the laboratory funnels for filtration sake, volumetry flask, volumetry flask to prepare a solutions of a standard concentrations or always remember while you are trying to do with a volumetry flask in the titrations, everyone will get a normal confusion whether to consider lower meniscus or upper meniscus. Follow always lower meniscus, do not get conf confused. If at all certain people will follow the side parts, you need to maintain the throw determination so that error will be maintained through to, throughout and droppers. When you try to make a 0.1 percent concentration solution in a 100 ml volumetric flask, you will be very comfortable with add a distilled water with a, uh, by just pressing it up to 90 level. From 90 to 100, majority of the people will fumble because of the practice. Do not get confidence, overconfidence by pressing some more time so that it crosses 100 ml. While you are trying to do a volumetric analysis in an experiment, your error plays a lot of role and which will show the your way of analysis doing also will be absurd. So, you need to take a help of a dropper at a final stage of filling the volumetric flask with a solution. Pipettes for pipetting, burettes for various titrations, ring stands, rings and clamps. This is basically to fix your burette in a laboratory for doing the titrations and filter crucibles like for, for example, when you are trying to filter a slurry, you need to separate the slurry solid particles from the liquid, your normal filtration techniques does not help you, then you go for a filter crucibles with the help of Buchner funnel or vacuum filtration. Spatulas, this is more important when you are trying to do analysis, qualitative analysis with a, in, in the laboratory in a systematic manner, you need to always use spatulas. There are two advantages. One is accuracy measurement, your confidence level build up. Second, the standards of particular ordination or a college will be maintained. Thermometers for various type for various type of reactions, you need to have the help of thermometers. Bunsen burners. When you try to heat certain solutions, you need to have a help of the Bunsen burners. Balances, just like we have seen an analytical balance type, you should always have a help of balance without which you do not know what sort of weight you are trying to do analysis. Weighing bottles are apart from the oil type face papers, you will also have a weighing bottles which is a standard practice in the laboratories for weighment. Desiccators, desiccators normally when you try to do certain analysis, when you try to cool it and then weigh, weighment will be done, you, during that period you never should leave the particular substance when you are trying to do an organ like LOA or ash content after doing, after bringing the sample, after burning or after temp maintaining temperature when you take it out, you need to keep a desiccator. Do not neglect an instrument and desiccator is also a big subject. Try to understand what sort of material will be there in desiccator, how it is taking care of the moisture. So, these things also fine level you should think and develop your skills in such a way that is the purpose I am trying to always emphasize on the smallest equipment available in the laboratories. Drying ovens, normally people will do because instead of using so many filter papers, people will try to wash it and then keep it in that. 
so that it will be dried. Here I would like to introduce some of the promising equipment and instrument for the lab as well as for industrial purpose where your future thinking depends after doing the basic analysis you need to expose to these type of techniques as and when opportunity comes. The purpose of maintaining auto burets and auto pipettes, majority of the builder companies having continuously having a process industries that does not spare much time with the equipment. So, they always will have an auto samplers, auto burets, auto pipettes. I will give you an example. There is a builder company in Vizag where there are 150 HPLCs are there, 150 and all 150 HPLCs will run on its own. When you analyst fix everything, it will do the duty after, after filling up everything till end. So, why I am telling is now there is a lot of competition for analyst and a good thinking fellow. Try to understand the basics and develop a temperament and do it. First one I want to give it an example for the students since you are in the Andhra Pradesh, you are also exposed to the West and East Godavari students. I would like to focus on the particular example, Soxalate extraction. I will show you the figure Soxalate extraction. The purpose of using this extraction apparatus is one needs to separate a solvent from organic or solid sample, solid liquid separation. Suppose organic compounds are associated with a sludge or a solid mass, you need to take out or extract that oil uh, organic compounds so that recovery will be done. So, for this I would like to give two big and best examples in for East and West Kodari students. There are so many rice husk plants are there. Rice husk will have 16 to 18 percent of edible oil percentage. There are so many plants existing where N hexane will be used as an organic solvent, rice husk will be made as a pellet, the 12 to 16 percent or 12 to 18 percent of oil will be extracted into N hexane and from an exane the organic compounds are soluble oil compounds, the same compounds will be extracted back again so that N exane will be recovered back. I would like to give an example here, we fumble to do a 1 kg or 2 kg experiment in a laboratory. If you really get a chance to have a look at a plant like this in your own place in east and west, you will be surprised to see every day the amount of work they do nearly 100 to 200 tons of uh, process will be done. Here is one needs to understand the sludge sample rice as as you all of you know it looks like an ash content. That ash cannot be poured directly into a column or a system and then put exam and expect uh, it will not be done. And an, in, a, an entrepreneur or industrialist always look recovering uh, oil compounds is a first object as well as recovering back of an exam used for as an extraction media also is important. So, I would like to give an example here. People are succeeding by this technique solvent extraction or soxalate extraction apparatus by using this type of technique. They are recovering 96 to 98 percent of oil from the solid sample. Apart from that they use say suppose they use 100 liters or 100 kgs or 100 tons of NXN per day and they recover back 95 to 96 percent back again which will be reprocessed. Why I am trying to give an example my dear students, by understanding technique or by understanding equipment do not get satisfied at that stage. Look at the application part where it is exactly happening. Why I am telling is theory, practice and interlink with application is only success for upcoming students now. Now, gel dal digestion apparatus, vacuum pumps, gel dal digestion in any of a standard laboratories for ammonical nitrogen we use it vacuum pumps, vacuum filtration operators. As I told you all of you, the both of them when you expose to a process industries in a bigger manner, they try to filter every day uh, cages of cages of slurries for doing analysis. For that they cannot filter with a pumps and a cloth, they always with go with a vacuum filtration so that filtration will be fast and separation also will be easy. So, try to get exposed for these type of apparatus as and when you get chance. It, it will be very fundamental, but I am trying to look at some of the figures. Uh, see, the, everybody can understand in beakers starting from 25 ml, you will have up to 2 liters also. There are various applications, various usages. For example, for our BAC level, maybe 50 level, 50 ml 
and 100 ml may be sufficient at this stage for us. But try to do graduated means fundamentally you are supposed to follow when you are not having in a position to use the graduated cylinder, when you are having a graduated beaker which is a calibrated, always ensure the volume taken for a type of analysis should be careful. Conical flasks will be normally used for a titration. Funnels for filtration purpose, you will have a various type of funnels for filtration. Graduated cylinders as I just told you and volumetric flasks you will have, pipettes, burettes, Bunsen burners as I told you you can heat it in. The purpose of showing this is not that you does not know. The purpose of showing Bunsen burner to you, everybody knows a pipe will be connected to a plastic pipe which will be connected to a cylinder. We just uh, put a light and a uh, flame will come. Here I wanted you to understand how you can adjust the flame in such a way the maximum temperature comes. Similarly, in the previous experiment when I explained is a particular air acetylene mixture will give a temperature up to 2400 or 2600 which will be helpful to take care of the excited atoms in that particular energy. There will be standard methods to adjust the fuel air ratio and also a flame type. If you do not keep that type of flame either in Bunsen burner at a classical level or at AAS level, you are not going to get the reliable reading. So, for that one should have a grip on the each instrument and each equipment he is going to use. This is one which I am talking couple of uh, minutes back. You can see the chocolate extraction here. You can look at the flask. In the green portion which you have taken, you consider that as a rice husk. Okay? Then you have uh, taken the reservoir of the uh, NXN you have taken from the bottom. You are heating it. You know the boiling point, how it is happening, the boiling point as well as the solubility aspects and the extraction technique is helping it to happen. In the same way, wherever oil drilling companies are there, there are so many oil drilling companies in the east and west. The drilling mud will have 8 to 9 percent of oil. Techniques of this sort also coming in an aggressive manner to recover the oil back. So, you can always have a look at the condenser, what sort of operation it will do when you heat the hexane. The heated mass is getting into top of the portion then get condensed and come back and then get, get uh, associated with the sludge and then slowly see if you happen to entire column if you pack up the rice husk in a loose way it does not happen. You keep a pellet size so that the penetration of exam will happen and the extraction efficiency also improves. Calibration methods of glass fairs. Uh, different types of uh, uh, there, there is only single type of calibration methods are available standard, but while you are arriving that is a particular correct value, you need to take 10 or 15 readings at a particular temperature and volume and then only you take the mean values and then take it dented. But majority of the glassware or the equipment what we purchase for the lab purpose will be calibrated. But do not get satisfied that a, a supplier have done calibration it is not my job you need to understand the calibration of the glassware to maintenance of an instrument. Then only your application knowledge will enhance. Try to understand that. Usage of chocolate extraction apparatus in separating organic compounds from solid sample in oil segment has been explained which is a, a classic example for um, salt cylinder extraction method. In majority of determinations pH of a solution plays a major role. I need not tell you this because Everyone will speak acidic, basic, neutral. These are the three words we talk at the pH. Let me tell honestly, till I complete my MSc, I also does not know how the pH meter will work. But you people cannot satisfy like me because now the competition is so high, you need to understand. When you try to expose a liquid sample to a pH meter or get in contact with that, how pH is coming, that you need to understand. For that, you need to little bit face, little bit interaction levels and little bit uh, um, a practical approach needs to be improved. For example, I have given the calibration part and the maintenance part. See these uh, things looks very simple because everybody knows pH meter will be calibrated with 4, 7 and 9 buffers and uh, after uh, standardizing we put the sample and reading will come. That is all, that is the idea we will have. Like majority of equipment also is a specific ion electrode or spectrophotometer. When absorbance calculation comes report has been given 
we thought we have done our job. The demand is so high, you need to understand each and step of every stage, which is not impossible again. Don't think repeatedly I am telling, so you cannot pick up. First of all, students, my dear students, speak something out, first thing. Express your ideas very clearly and interact with the faculty and seniors. So here, when you talk about the components, a normal fellow will tell, a box will be there, an electrode will be there, display will be there, minus log H plus is the pH. This is what we expect in the average manner, majority of average manner. Why H plus ions, how it is detecting, what are the electrons, what are functioning, these we need to really understand. So just have a look, because why I am telling, pH plays a very crucial role in majority of analysis, majority of extractions, majority of process operations. There are so many variety type of pH meters, that is a different aspect. First of all, sensors are there, but we need to understand the basic principle and concept of pH meter and operation and maintenance bar so that you can deliver more and more um, fruitful goods in the service you render it. Here, you can have a look, that is electrode which is connected to pH meter and every one of knows it is giving a pH directly. There will be three switches on the knob, one is the standby, the other one is millivolts, the other one is pH. So straight away, whenever an analyst will go, uh, his job is directly take a solution, just put it in water and put it in the sample then turn it into pH and see the reading and come back. Do not get satisfied here. First of all, you need to think always on the calibration part command. If you are adjusting with one standard, the second standard when you expose it, when you bring it to contact, it needs to approach the same reading. If not, certain adjustments are demanding or needed, you need to take the help of either instrumentation or maintenance to correct it back. Here, you have a two electrodes here, one reference electrode and one glass electrode. Nowadays, Two electrons are combinedly coming in the single uh, uh, system only, so that you are what you are trying to measure here, I will tell you. You can see the glass bulb down bottom, which is getting contact with the uh, effluent which you are trying to analyze. Here, that is a pH sensitive glass membrane. So, the structure and how it is constructed, what sort of solution is filled, everything is available with you. One needs to understand. Everybody knows a voltmeter in the probes measures the difference between the voltage of two electrodes. So, a voltage of two electrodes difference is getting measured. The meter, two electrodes means here, remember it is a glass electrode and reference electrode. The meter then translates the voltage difference to pH meter, pH and display it on the screen. So, here we understood it is only trying to measure the millivolts across the two difference between the two electrodes and then it is a voltage is that is converted into pH and displaying it. One needs to understand there ion exchange phenomena is happening place. The glass electrode which is also built with certain metals and silver chloride, when it comes into contact with H plus ion concentration, if your H plus ion concentration is more in the analyte solution, it will be called as a more acidic. When you are trying to dip your electrode in that, exchange of electrodes will, electrons will take place in such a way. H plus will go inside and certain ions will take place. Here, my dear students, you need to understand ion exchange phenomena is happening. Millivolts are current or millivolts is uh, the, uh, across the electrodes has been determined, which is getting converted into pH is a fundamental basis for this. All of us knows we need to clean the glass electrode properly, need to keep separately. A standation to be done, everything, but practices are more important and practical thinking is more important. Before taking a pH measurement, the meter must be calibrated using solution of known pH. Otherwise, without calibration also you get the reading. Do not, for example, like I have given the example of uh, stripping or analyzing the trace elements from a drinking water, if your pH is not 2.2 plus or minus 0.1, you will never get the metals extracted into the laborious job which you are going to take and do the analysis. So, that fundamental point for that particular type of analysis, you need to always think pH plays a very crucial role. So, hence we need to ourselves monitor and do the things carefully. That mind sense should come to the each student in the BS level. I have given you the basic principle of pH meter which I have tried to explain you now. 
a pH meter provides a value of how acidic or alkaline. That's what normally we do. Suppose your exchange phenomena takes place. If your H plus ions are more, it will be acidic. It is less, it will be basic. So this is the only th I am trying to do it here. Basic principle of the pH meter is to measure the concentration of hydrogen ions as it dissolves in water, forming uh, everybody knows H plus and OH minus dissociates. Like that, this is all principle has been explained. Calibration part in the given time, I am trying to push you a little bit of fundamental so that you will understand and pay attention. Not that, see, remember, my dear students, getting 90 percent, maybe 60 percent will do. But the remaining 40 percent, I have seen so many places, they are very good in practicals, but sometimes fumble in theory. That, that is in a classic example which I am trying to interlink with uh, in the error analysis of uh, precision and accuracy to all of you. Calibration of pH meter, operation of pH meter, this everybody knows that solution having pH less than 7 will be acidic, remember solutions having pH more than 7 will be basic in nature, solutions having pH 7 will be considered as a neutral, accuracy and precision. This is what I am going to interlink the example for you. For example, in intermediate or BAC first year level, you have given a, given a one unknown. Okay? Anticipate the answer is 19.2 ml needs to come in the determination. You got 17.2 when you have done 10 times. That will be called as a precise. But it is not accurate because the given unknown is 19.2 for you. So, why I am trying to give accuracy and precision here is these two are important not only to understand the basic concepts of error in chemical analysis, but it will also applicable to all of us. We may be accurate, may not be precise. We may be more precise, but not accurate. Why I am trying to tell these aspects? Try to remember, always try to develop a knowledge in such a way, not only basing on the Mars, but basing on the application oriented interlinking understanding should be developed to each individual student. Here I have given certain graphs to you. You can see that all the four. This shows which one is low accuracy, low precision, first one. If you look at the second one, it is a low accuracy, high precision because even though target is the center, the entire 10 readings have been focused at a upper level, but very close them. So, all of them are precise, but not accurate. When you see the other one, center target reading, actual reading, majority are focused there. So, high accuracy, low precision because it is scattered. When you take the last one, the precision and accuracy existing in a maximum way, that shows the, the uh, determinations which a particular analyst has done on 10 times or 20 times is very, very close to accuracy and precision. Students working in a bulk drug industry when they exposed to ISO techniques, always you will facing in audits, your results should be accurate and precise. precise. Now, here before I conclude this, this particular lecture, I would like to show one video presentation to you so that you will try to understand a little bit more. Okay, the, here what, what I mean to say, in, uh, what I want to really show in the video picture to you while we try to do the pH meter, calibration how we do it, how we dip the uh, uh, electrode properly, these sort of things I thought of showing it. Anyway, where, where it, it is time now for you to concentrate on the basics, but the, the techniques which I have covered for the lab apparatus are so nominal, but uh, my interest is all of you should. Uh, we concentrate on the basics and whatever instrument you have, try to get command of that so that in, in, in uh, your future endeavors, you will be successfully uh, doing your career in a successful manner. I will try to cover some more topic in the next lecture which will be connected to some thermogrammetric techniques.
Good afternoon, students. Uh, now, uh, I will take some certain topics, the third topic for you, the principles of thermogrammetry. This is a purely an instrumental technique which works on the physical properties. Say, for example, any compound, when it gets exposed to heat, certain sort of changes needs to happen. So, here we are trying to use an, an equipment called a thermogrammetry technique in which we try to introduce a compound so that we will observe what sort of changes are happening when we give a temperature in a controlled environment. The principle of the thermogrammetry is based on the simple fact that sample is weighed continuously as it is being heated to elevated temperatures and changes in the mass of sample are studied. Here, when you are trying to give a temperature in a gradual manner for a sample in a set of conditions in equipment, you will measure the loss of weight or changes for that particular mass will be observed in this technique. Changes in the temperature affect the sample. Not all thermal changes bring a change in mass sampling. Sometimes it also happens melting also. So, there are certain theoretical aspects which I have explained here. Crystallization, but some thermal events will happen. Desorption, absorption, sublimation, evaporation, oxidation, reduction. I do not want to read all these things. Here is my intention is when you keep a substance in an instrument, when you try to give a temperature in a thermogravimetric analysis in a controlled manner, in a controlled environment like a, a nitrogen in a atmosphere, it happens certain changes and those changes will be observed properly in this technique and so that you will try to con conclude a conclusions basing on the interpretation of the data. So, thermogravimetric analysis is a technique to understand the changes of a particular compound or a substance when it is exposed to this equipment as per the conditions with a given temperature, what sort of changes are happening with reference to mass, with reference to endothermic, with reference to exothermic, melting, sintering, ash. All these things will be uh, uh, taken care into thermogravimetric technique which is widely used in so many mineral processing and bulldog units. You may not straight away get a chance to get exposed to this technique, but always get acquainted as and when you get a chance so that you will get more and more knowledge on the physical properties as well as the impact of certain conditions has been exposed to that particular compound. What sort of changes can be done also can be seen. It is used also used for so certain applications which I have written here. Here, thermogrammetric means in thermogrammetric analysis, the sample is heated in a, a, in a given environment like, like air and what nitrogen, carbon dioxide, helium, argon, etcetera. But whatever we are studying now here, it is an inert atmosphere at nitrogen. We are trying to uh, study uh, one or two examples here to understand the sample. The, the technique is simple, technique is uh, standard. So, you, here also you will always measure a standard to understand the changes and so standard will be always taken in inert so that it will not have an impact when the temperature has been given a programming and heating. Here the change in the weight of the substance is recorded as a function of temperature of time. The temperature is increased uh, as a constant rate for a known initial weight. So, for example, why I am telling you are trying to heat it continuously it is getting heated and the temperature is maintained or a same temperature is going to heat up and there are no changes and suddenly the peak will come down or go up. So, these are the peaks you are going to see now. So, just having understanding the graph uh, and uh, uh, you can straight away understand it is only technique between temperature and mass what is happening. But while really doing the experiment or when you try to expose to the experiment, you will be knowing a lot of things to understand in the equipment. The change in the weight of a substance is regarded as I told you there will be certainly change, change in the mass which you have originally taken happens. This will be recorded as per the time and the temperature we will record it. The temperature is increasing at a constant rate uh, for a known initial weight of the substance and the changes in weight of the substance and the changes of weights are recorded as a function of temperature at different time intervals. So, here I, I would like to straight away show you a plot for you. Example here I am trying to take a silver nitrate. Silver nitrate can be studied in a TGA technique using a TGA technique. 
what will happen if you expose uh, silver nitrate a known substance known uh, mass has been taken and introduced to TGA techniques you will program the temperature uh, uh, required temperature and required sample weight will be taken in an inert atmosphere then you will start observing on the monitoring what is happening when you start doing that silver nitrate as all of you know oh, at one stage or other it is supposed to break or dissociate the silver and nitrate ions and what sort of changes will happen with the temperature you can have a look at the graph also you will understand very well here the silver nitrate remains constant up to 473 degrees so when you start heating program it you will see a straight line without any change in the mass you will, you will always observe a hike in the temperature but no change in the mass indicating that silver nitrate is thermally stable up to 473 degrees this gives so what will happen when it heated to silver nitrate to elevated temperature it gets dissociated into silver oxides of nitrogen and oxygen so this is observation so we start seeing this after 473 in such a way we will start measure the loss in the weight continues up to 608 degrees so from 473 degrees sim 608 degrees the changes are happening in such a way by the time finally it comes to 608 the balance will operate and how it happens the sample will be loaded into furnace what sort of technique there are auto samples also coming so that straight away when you put the sample it straight away takes into furnace when the reaction is completed it will take back again so that you will have a more reliable data now one more example which you can see calcium oxalate monohydrate is there this technique will be used for the calibration of the equipment for example either TGA or a second technique is DTA the difference between tga and dta both are techniques of the same concept the difference is you i can, uh, for uh, for students to understand i can always give an example like a single beam and double beam spectrophotometer in this dta here you are only trying to measure the changes in comparison with an inert atmosphere so you will have a, an inert atmosphere uh, in the inert atmosphere you take a sample another sample in such a way which will not get affected by getting exposed to the temperature which you are trying to give it for calcium oxalate so this example holds good for the calibration of both the techniques of uh, a tga thermal gravimetric analysis as well as a differential thermal uh, analyzer only difference is you will have more uh, realistic data and a sophisticated version is the dta 
these are the changes you normally have. Like I've explained here, you can see from the graph certain changes do happen with calcium oxalate uh, with a monohyde data will happen. You can always see from the from the reactions which I've tried to show you. H2O gets separated. All of you knows, depending upon the the the, the series sequence of uh, release will be uh, water first, organics and LOA next, and then any other possibilities will be later gases are. If you happen to ash level also, we go up to centering for certain examples. In the coal industry also, this will be used. In the power sector, they use. In organic sector, they use. So many industries are using this technique for having their own internal advantages. Now, this calcium example, uh, calcium oxalate example, all of you can understand. This is also getting separated with a water molecule, carbon monoxide gas, and carbon dioxide at three stages. And what sort of change is happening? Whether it is endothermic or exothermic, what is happening? One needs to understand by looking at the graph and while doing practically ourselves. So each of the which I am trying to show the graphs here, at what stage of water and organics removed at temperatures also given here. So now DTA, uh, we, we, the, when you are trying to do a calibration, you, you are trying to do a calibration in such a way you are trying to compare with a known standard. This is what we do with the calibration. So, when you have done the calcium oxalate known quantity, when you studied compared with the theoretically, it is well within the ratio. See, what I am trying to explain you is calcium oxalate is the best example to take as a um, calibration standard for both the techniques, which you can see from the first and first you compare theoretical stoichiometry needs to, it is indicating 12.3 loss will be there. For example, water comp, water molecules. Second stage measured weight loss in your practical is 12.34. Likewise, if you compare the difference or the comparison between theory and practical remains so, uh, so close so that we can take it granted that particular equipment is working in a proper condition. So, remember my dear students, calcium oxalate compound will be studied to know the efficacy or accuracy of the equipment. Similarly, you will have a DTA which I have tried to explain you. For this, you can take an example of a calcium acetate. In the same way, I have tried, but looking at the time, uh, I, I cannot extend more, but uh, when, I, uh, when I get next time opportunity, certainly I will interact with you to explain more and more techniques for you. Uh, I am sure uh, the, the words which I told is only to encourage you, do not get yourself disgraced. Uh, uh, knowledge is open to all of us and only thing you need to take chances. I have also tried to give presentation in my calcium oxalate, uh, calcium estate also for the DTA with reference standard also I have given. Uh, but looking at, uh, looking at the time given, uh, I cannot extend more and more for you at this stage. But I am sure next time I will get chance, I will certainly interact with all of you. And before I conclude, I just wanted to show a, a, a video for you. Let us hope I can play this. I could not show this video also to you, um, but um, anyway, the, these are the concepts which I have tried to give you. Uh, only thing in the video you can see how the auto sampler will work and how the sample will take into the uh, inside the furnace, how monitoring will be done, recording will be done. These things are there. Thank you, my dear students, and uh, I am sure next time I will again uh, get an opportunity to speak some more topics with you. All the best.